good evening everybody. So tonight I wanted to do a quick comparison of Solar Resistant and Watch Power. So I did a video of, oh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago now on how to set up watch power and kind of did a little walkthrough of it. And I told you that my next video is going to be a comparison between solar assistant and watch power. Well, little did I know that within a day or so of actually putting that video out, uh, watch power app was going to be down for like two weeks, it seems. You couldn't pull up any information. And then finally, once it came back up, it wasn't all there. Like you couldn't go through and actually see or change any of your server, or your inverter parameters. So I just had to wait until it came back up. And finally, it came back. So let's jump on over. I actually have two mobile phones set up. And so we'll have a split screen of solar system on one side and watch power on the other side and we'll try and do a quick comparison between the two. A couple major differences between solar assistant and watch power right out of the gate. Watch power requires an internet connection so you have to basically send your data to a remote server in order for that data to be displayed in the watch power app or in Des monitor and I believe there might be a few other options as well whereas solar assistant requires a Raspberry Pi but it does not require an internet connection your data remains local and I believe even when you access through the website my assumption is you're basically tunneling into your Raspberry Pi to view the data off of your Pi I could be completely wrong it could be sending the data to an off-site server as well I'm not sure. I haven't taken the time to actually dig into it to see. But my assumption is, because it does not require internet, that it's just going to stay local. Uh, looking at two different devices, so we've got Solar Assistant on the left and Watch Power on the right. So Solar Assistant is actually a web app. It's not actually an installed app. So you can view it in your browser, but you can also, on mobile devices, you can save it to your home screen so it looks like an app but it's, it's just a web app that opens up full screen and doesn't have the browser controls, the, the URL bar and everything cluttering up the, the display. Watch Power is an installed app. And so you actually have to download that from your web store, uh, whether that's the Google Play or Apple uh, App Store. So let's open up both applications. And you can see I've already logged in to Solar Assistant, and I've logged in to Watch Power before too, but the Remember Me checkboxes do different things. So in Solar Assistant, when you say Remember Me, that means keep me logged in. In Watch Power, when you say Remember Me, that means pre-fill in my username and password. The only reason that I can think of for this in Watch Power is because of this Wi-Fi config button on the bottom. If you need to add additional devices, you might need to use that to connect a new inverter to Watch Power. But when you open up the app, tap Login. Once you finally open up both applications, you see on the left, we, with Solar Assistant, we're already in a dashboard. With Watch Power, it takes you to a device list. Now, this is another big difference between the two applications. Solar Assistant is going to combine all the data from the multiple inverters into one visible display. It will still give you the ability to list out the details for the individual inverter, but it assumes that it's one environment. Whereas Watch Power treats everything separate, with the exception of this overview tab. So this overview tab, if it loads, there we go. This overview tab, I believe this is showing the PV data uh, for the current day. And so you can see it thinks that 1.2 kilowatts is, is the max. Nope, nope, 1.7. 
kilowatts. So it is the, what the current power says on the top. And with a total of 2.6 kilowatts. Now this is, this is in watch power, there's only one inverter hooked up. I did not hook up both. So this is not going to be a, you know, 100% apples to apples comparison until I get to areas that I can view the specific inverter information. But that's that's one big downside to watch power is you have to jump into one inverter, look at the information, and then jump out and look at the other inverter and look at the information back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Whereas Solar Resistant, it, it throws it all in one spot for you. Watch power is listing out the, the basic information for the inverter that we're on, which is currently inverter 2. And in Solar Assistant on the left, if we want to see the details, we tap on this inverter icon on the dashboard. And now we have a breakdown of our individual inverters. And so here's just another view of the fact that watch power is at least five minutes off in its data display. I believe it refreshes once every five minutes. Here's a great example. So watch power, if you just saw that icon, just refreshed. And so on the top right up here, you can see it says one kilowatt of load. Whereas if we look here on the left in Solar Assistant, we currently have 365 watt actual load. It thinks that watch power thinks that we're at 18% and we're actually at five. So if you don't care about having live data, you know, watch power might work for you. But if you care about live data, uh, Solar Assistant hands down. So we've got our individual server information, PV power, and all this breakdown. So you've, you've got a, the same information listed in both places. Uh, our watch power shows product information. Well, if we want to see that, we go to the config tab in Solar Assistant. And then under inverter settings. And you can see machine type off-grid on both. You can see the CPU version, 7966 in both. The only thing is, Solar Assistant does not show your secondary CPU version. Big deal. If you want to see the, uh, the rest of the information that Solar Assistant's already displaying in one place, you switch over in Watch Power to the Rated Information tab. So you can see all your current ratings of which Solar Assistant's already displaying this in one place. I guess it helps if I switch to Inverter 2. So another big place that Solar Assistant shines over Watch Power, you can see Watch Power has a history. And if we look at the timestamp, the timestamp says 1119. So if I want to look at the next snapshot, it's 1114. Next snapshot, 1109. So it's just taking snapshots of the data and saving it off. We can go to the Charts tab of Solar Assistant. And we can look at all the data. And when you have multiple inverters, you can see down here it says inverter 1, inverter 2. So if you tap in any of the charts, it's going to give you the information for both inverters. And I do not believe Watch Power actually refreshes this data unless you manually refresh it. Whereas Solar Assistant has a refresh setting which is by default one minute or you can just hit this refresh dashboard icon and it's going to refresh the data right in front of you. you you can also filter down your date and time range to either get a broader view or get more specific with all of your data but also they have a second charts area which gives you a summary of the last 30 days in chart form and in details, as well as the last 52 weeks in a chart and the last 12 months in detail form. Looking at the parameters, if you want to change the parameters in Watch Power or Solar Assistant, you go to the Parameter tab in Watch Power. In Solar Assistant, you're going to go to the Config tab, scroll down onto an, under Inverter Settings, and in this case, we'll switch to Inverter 2. And we hit Edit under whichever settings we want to change. So if we want to change battery settings, you hit Edit. 
battery settings here. Now watch power does give you more settings than what Solar Assistant does, but a lot of the additional settings that it gives you don't necessarily apply in my environment. Like these equalization settings, they, they, don't, they don't apply at all. But if I just pick uh, back to grid voltage, so it's set to 48, and you can see on the left, two grid battery voltage is 48. And if you wanted to change that, you tap it and hit save in Solar Assistant. And in Watch Power, you tap it and hit setting. Now there is one additional setting in here that I have not used, but it seems like it would be fairly beneficial, is the restore to defaults. So if you've got something going on in one of your inverters where you just need to reset the settings back to whatever the factory defaults were. It looks like you can do that in Watch Power where you cannot do this in Solar Assistant. Haven't used it, don't really want to redo all my settings, but that does seem like it's somewhat of a nice feature. The only other thing that's, that Watch Power has that Solar Assistant doesn't are these alarms. And it's basically the log of all the alarms. You can see all these are PV loss, basically when the sun's coming up or sun's going down. And there's not enough voltage to have the MPPT start doing its thing. It throws these in here and you can filter by specific dates, times, whatever. But Solar Assistant doesn't display any of the log data. And I mean, honestly, it would be nice if it would. I would... Uh, think that would be something that should be somewhat easy to pull in if it's available. So the last thing that, that Solar Assistant, uh, the last couple of things that Solar Assistant can do is it can help with power management if you don't have batteries that are linked to your inverter to give your inverter the ability to change settings based on state of charge. Solar Assistant can do that for you uh, using this maintain battery state of charge. So you see I have mine set to 30%. I don't care what time, if my battery drops below 30%, I want it to switch over to SUB mode. And then it switches back once it gets to gets 40% higher. So once it gets up to 70%, then it switches back. Uh, there is a built-in battery shutdown protection. And up at the top again, you can see you can change your settings for a set time frame of which... Watch Power in and of itself does not have that ability to do that. Very basic breakdown of the two apps. But you can just see, even on these two pages alone, you get a whole lot more information right at your fingertips. And it's easier to understand looking at Solar Assistant versus using Watch Power. Now I know there are, like I said, there's other applications that use the same data, DES Monitor, and I, I know there's another one, I don't remember what it is. But they try to pretty things up for you, but again, you're still limited to that five minute range. Well, I hope that was helpful, I guess. I mean, it, it definitely shows you how powerful Solar Assistant can be versus the basic integrated watch power app that you get with these inverters. Now I have seen, I believe it was on the Solar Assistant website that if your inverter supports watch power, then it should support solar resistant as well. And I'm assuming that's due to the fact that both programs utilize the same protocols and information, the same ports and everything to get all the information off the inverters. So if you've got a different style inverter, uh, I know all the, the sister inverters of, of the EG4s, you know, the Sun Gold Powers, the MPP, the Orient Power versions. Uh, those should all support Solar Assistant, no problem. But then there's the Grow Watts and a bunch of other ones. So if your inverter natively supports watch power, you should be able to use Solar Assistant. So again, I hope this helped. 
I don't know if it was as quick as I was hoping it to be, but it is what it is. All right, uh, y'all stay safe, and we'll catch up with you later.